All right, guys, back to work tonight. Another wild session comes to an end. Hope you made some money out there. We're back to work tonight, though. Wednesday evening, getting ready for Thursday's trading session. We have a lot of great trades setting up for tomorrow. I want to make sure you're ready to make some money tomorrow. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video to make sure you get a game plan to make some money on Thursday. Before we jump in, we've got a lot we're going to cover in tonight's video. Before we jump in and get this party going tonight, make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And as always, I appreciate you guys supporting this YouTube channel. If you enjoy the content, hit that like button for me. Thanks for tuning in and watching here tonight. But enough of the intro, right? It's Wednesday, getting ready for Thursday. Get some big trades coming for tomorrow. Got non-farm payrolls on Friday. Boy, everything is bullish right now. Everything's looking bullish. NASDAQ, QQQs are bullish. S&P and the SPY is bullish. Yeah, no surprise the oil is bullish, right? We heard from OPEC this afternoon, this morning, a 2 million barrel per day uh, production cut. Not a not a huge surprise to see oil being so bullish right now. Bull markets, but you know what I'm going to say, right? We're right back up at major areas of resistance right now. We are pretty much right back where we were just about 24 hours ago. It feels like Groundhog Day here on this video newsletter. All kidding aside, though, there are two key components to making money tomorrow from what I can tell right now. The first one is bull breakouts, right? Bull breakouts. We talked about bull breakouts a lot in last night's video. We got a bunch of bull breakout patterns, four different types of breakouts we'll talk about tonight. But the fun tomorrow, and what I really hope we get tomorrow, are bear traps. So it's bear traps and bull tra <laughs> bear traps and bull breakouts, bear traps. Got a lot of really nice areas to look for bear traps. And I say I say traps because that really is going to be the key to finding the best entries for tomorrow. So I'm going to go over how to make money with those traps tomorrow. You'll have a game plan by the time we're finished up with tonight's video. Now, before we jump into each one of these charts, though, let's make sure we're all on the same page for tomorrow. We have a wide open day tomorrow. There really isn't a lot of news here. I wouldn't even worry about that jobless claims. I wouldn't even bother with Loretta Mester tomorrow. Everyone's eyes and ears are now focused on that employment number because, as you guys know, we are in a bad news is good news, good news is bad news environment right now with the Fed, right? So that takes center stage tomorrow morning. What that means to us tomorrow is that tomorrow afternoon you really got to be careful a lot of unwinding of positions a lot of hedging goes on markets get a bit weird those last couple hours of the session so what I always tell my students in our trade room make your money as early as you can by 2.30 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon you got to be you better be getting some good reasons to be to be entering new trades into the close tomorrow so I'll be trying to get my trades off as early as possible tomorrow save those bullets save your capital in the afternoon we're going to come back and we'll crush it on friday morning and we'll talk about friday's game plan of course in tomorrow night's video but again wide open day tomorrow which is great because you know uh, outside of any unforeseen updates out of the fed or possibly out of the russia ukraine situation the energy situation in europe you know those things are obviously lingering out there right now but from, from what we know right now, it's a pretty wide open day tomorrow, which is great because it's kind of the last full session before that big non-farm payroll explosion we see on that first Friday of the month. So back to our charts here. Got a wide open day for tomorrow. Plenty of ways to make money. Now, guys, whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of them like we do in our trade room, make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video tonight because I'll provide different trade ideas, different strategy variations. And you know how I roll, right? I try to save the best stuff all the way to the the end so i'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the finish so take some notes grab some screenshots if you got questions drop the questions in the comment section below and let's get this party going here we'll go nasdaq s p and we'll wrap tonight up here on the crude oil over on the nasdaq real quickly here four thousand tick chart on the NASDAQ. Be aware, all of these are tick charts tonight. You can see the exact time frames in the upper left-hand corner. Also be aware, too, NASDAQ and QQQs, very similar to the S&P and the SPY. So pretty much everything we talk about tonight on the NASDAQ or the S&P are very much interchangeable. That's going to be the key to seeing these next couple charts here. Now, there are three key insights for us that are telling us likely where the biggest, the best money-making trades are going to be here for tomorrow. The first key insight is, I know, I know, we're very bullish right now, but you could definitely tell today the bears are still there, right? They are definitely still there. They're trying to hold back the tide right now. Look at a four-hour chart. 
right? Look at a daily chart. It's tough to call this. A four-hour chart's a good example, right? On a four-hour chart right now, it's very difficult to call this a bull market just yet. But I'll tell you, another couple more days of this, bull breakout going higher. We may definitely be shifting to a bull bias like you'll see tonight on the oil. Why is a bear bias important? Well, for me tomorrow, like I mentioned, bear traps are going to be a big part of this. And so we're hoping that the bears are going to come in and try to send this thing lower so we can use their stops, use their stops for potentially some really nice short squeezes going back higher again. I like that bear bias in this situation because it gives us a chance to trap in some of those bears. I'm going to talk about what I mean by that here in a moment. The second key insight is the strength of this most recent move. Now, I realize that last night, right, we had that big V top off the high, but anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect to get a two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. Once we get the retest of that high, do we pull back off that high and create a trading range? We can then look for more buys below that low, or do we see it breakout going higher with that kind of slingshot, that breakout going higher here. That's a very big clue. It makes it very difficult for me to justify being a seller at this point because of the sheer strength of that most recent move for the bulls. And then last but not least, the third key insight is this one big trading range? Is this one big range? Let's go back and look left here a little bit because we talked about this last night on the video. We mentioned last night that we had that big move up, anticipating a retest, right? Kind of what we're looking for over here, right? Well, if, if you watched last night's video, we got that pullback, that retest, and pretty much my exact words last night were, we're either going to get that breakout going higher or we're going to get this thing to go back down to this area, right, and look for that bounce back up. We got the bounce back up on the S&P, the, the NASDAQ. Again, it's a bear bias, right? So it's not a huge surprise to see bears go a little bit further and then snap it up. It went a little bit longer than I was expecting today. The S&P was a little bit easier, but you get the point. The point I'm going to make on this is, is this feels like this could be developing into one big trading range. And so that really gives me now some really good evidence of buys here. And also too, right, if... It doesn't seem likely, but possibly one bigger range here, which again is why bear traps at these lows are going to be a very nice uh, opportunity for us. I'll tell you, with this range, with this possible range right now, it is very difficult to, to find a good short right now. It is very difficult to find an area where it makes sense to be a seller because we have all the strength going higher, lots of support, and it feels like this area down here might be a little bit of a hidden bottom of this trading range. Okay, so now you know the key insights. Now you know what's going through my mind right now. Let's talk about those traps and let's talk about those breakouts, right? Because obviously buyers would love to get some bull breakouts going higher. We'll definitely talk about four different breakout patterns going higher here. But again, what I'm almost hoping for tomorrow is bear traps, right? Off of these lows here. So let's talk about this thing as it goes lower. Now, when we pull back off this low or, or pull back off this high, the biggest challenge we have right now is that we're still relatively high high up. Remember, this is the same spot we were 24 hours ago, right? So if we get a pullback right now, it's it's not exactly a very deep pullback. And the reason why a deep pullback is important is because deep pullbacks allow us to, well, get other buyers excited because they have a good risk reward ratio. So the moral of the story is, the point I want to make on this is, is as the market pulls back right now, we're probably not going to have as many buyers here as we'd like to have. And so in order for us to get an edge, right, to get, to get an edge over the sellers here, we need to get those bears, those sellers trapped in and use their stops to get that edge here. What I always tell my students is, is whenever you're buying relatively high, like in this situation, the key is going to be trapping in the bears and using what's called a bear trap. So in this situation, what we'll do is we want to see the bears try once, we want to see them try twice. And then what you want is, remember, the goal is to buy as low as you can here on this pullback. That trap entry is my favorite off of this zone right here, right? This zone right here. Now, there's a couple different variations of this that we can use. For example, as we pull back right now, let me get rid of this trend line. That trend line should not be a very big part of this for tomorrow. As we pull back right now, think about one try for the bears, two try for the bears, higher high, and that trap going 
going higher. Another scenario here you want to keep in mind would be trapping in the breakout bears. So let's say, for example, we take out that low. We pull back to the moving average. We see the bears now try to run this thing lower, but they're unsuccessful running it lower. At that point now, the bears come in one and two. That will also be a way to run some stops. Remember, we need to run some stops here. We need something that gives us a catalyst because again, we're still buying relatively high. So again, the two ways to buy this thing in this relatively shallow pullback is going to be the bear trap, bears once, bears twice, and that trap bench for the long. Where's my target? Back up to retest that high or, right, and get entry right here, or we wait for that move lower, we let the bears come in, let them right, let them retest that low. Once they retest that low, now we've got breakout bears now getting in. Makes sense, right? So now breakout bears who are selling that breakdown, now they're trapped. And once they start to fail here, we can use their stops as fuel for that punch going higher. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind on this variation of that entry is if we do get that run going higher, with that two try failure, what I want is, is to look for another bear trap for the re-entry. These happen quite a bit where we'll trap in those bears around support, we'll use their stops as fuel, and then on the way back up to retest that high, we get that little bear trap again, right? One try for the bears, two try for the bears, trap low, easy. Those are really good trades there on that relatively shallow pullback, okay? So again, it would be a, what we call a two-try failure, right, into that bear trap or that two-try trap entry. But let me go back up. I told you uh, the word trap would be would, would, be, would be very common here in this video. There's a lot of traps we have to really use here for tomorrow. Now, let's say the market goes lower here, right? Let's say it really takes off to the downside. This is where things get a little more difficult because just like today, it's going to feel very bearish down here. But remember, there's a very good chance here that this is one big trading range. Okay, so as we go below these lows here right now, ugh, it's tough to want to sell down there, right? It's very difficult. This whole area is very difficult to justify to find a good short entry down there. I'm going to literally look for the exact same game plan. So let's say now we get that stronger move down, right? Now we come in, right? Now we're now we're down here. We're down here. We're down here, right? So again, again, I really don't care where we are. It's that same sequence, right? I want to see those bears once, twice, get that trap, right, back up. Now, if I can get a really deep pullback here, now as this market begins to go higher now, now what I can do is I can go out and find a channel off that high, I can mark it off that low, and I can grab the entry off of that low right there, right? This could be any of the entry patterns that we talk about in our free trading course, right? It could be a bear trap. It could be a seller failure. It could be a pullback combination, right? Any of, again, any of the entry patterns I cover in the free course. I know most of you guys have taken the free course. You've learned about traps and failures and pullback combos. <laughs> so you guys make, you guys always make me laugh every day. You send me screenshots of your winning trades, all from the free stuff on our website. But listen, if you're here watching for the first time right now, if you haven't learned the traps, the failures, the pullback combos, if you haven't learned those setups yet, what I'll do is I'll put a link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link, take the free trading course. Uh, the strategy that I teach in that free class will help you find some easy winners, make it very easy to know where to avoid losses, and most importantly, I'll give you a, a game plan, a roadmap to follow every day. It'll give you a ton of confidence. If you're missing the best trades each day, if you're taking too many losses, take that free course. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading, right? That way, and again, grab that, that link that popped up there. That way, the next time we get that strong move down, you'll know what the two-try rule is. You'll know how to spot traps. You'll know how to find those new channels as we go higher, and you'll know how to drill down to your faster time frames and grab those entries like I've talked about so far here tonight. Also, too, don't forget, too, let's say we do get that strong run lower, right? Let's say we do do get that move back up and they retest those lows, right? Let's trap in some of the bears here. And again, this could happen here. It could happen here. Really anywhere below this area, guys. All right. It's, it could all be one big trading range. That's, that's the challenge. That's why traps are so important here, right? Very difficult to want to short 
at the potential range there. Now, if they do the strong move down, they retest that low. Okay, now remember the bear, the breakout bears are coming in. They're trying to short this thing because after all, it's a bear overall bias. Not so fast. That trading range keep talking about. Now trap in. Again, let those bears get short, right? Let them sell into this area here and then, then you've got their stops. Then you know where their pain is. Remember, we need to use something to give that, that catalyst, right? There's nothing better than to run those stops and get that nice strong punch higher here. And again, as we rip higher here, where do the buyers want to go? They want to go right back up to retest those highs, right? So now mark off that trend line, find that channel, and then again, drill down and find that entry. What I always look for on these kind of moves back up here is I look for those little prior swings. So I grab that channel top, I find the channel bottom, I look left, I find those prior swings, and that's almost always where you'll get the best entries. And again, these will be the traps, the failures, the pullbacks, the same stuff you guys learn in that free trading course. And again, I can't emphasize enough, this could happen here, it could happen here, it could happen here, okay? What, what I would love to get, probably the best possible scenario for this as it goes lower is, is to have this thing literally fall apart overnight, have them retest that low tomorrow, right? You know, let them retest that low and then one, two, trap in those bears back up because now you've got just a, a huge potential return, right, on that setup. That would be the best possible scenario for the buyers tomorrow, right? Let the bears completely demolish this thing going lower, okay? Let them retest or let them get that crown reversal, that trap I've been talking about, right? And then grab that and then grab that reversal, right? As it, as it runs back up, back up to retest those highs. I really like, again, lots of bear traps, right? Lots of bear traps as we go lower. And I can't promise, I won't say that word again here before we're done here for this video. Now, we now know how to trade this thing as it goes lower. What happens now if it goes higher, right? What if it breaks out and goes higher here? We got a bunch of breakout patterns I'm watching here for tomorrow. Let's cover those now on the E-mini S&P. Over on the S&P, the S&P is very, very similar, you can see here. Uh, to the NASDAQ or the QQQs. We got that long-term bear bias. We have a very strong move higher, right? Strong moves, again, will tell us they're going to want to retest that high. Once they retest the high, do we pull back and become a trading range, right? Pretty simple there. Or do we break out through the highs and look for some breakouts? Same basic and even more, even more obvious on the S&P is the potential for this to be one big trading range, Right, So it's very, very realistic right now to think we might be popping above, popping below. You can see why I say it's, I know we're bearish overall right now, but it's not easy to find a good short right now unless these bears really get something that changes the overall sentiment or the overall look of this chart here uh, for tomorrow. So we've talked about this going lower, right? Quick review here, as we go lower, it's that, it's that trap entry back up or it's that double bottom, right? Kind of that breakout going lower, trapping those bears, and then one, two, and back up to retest the high, right? Same basic idea here as we talked about on the NASDAQ. Now let's talk about if this market explodes and goes higher. Okay, as we go higher here, what's our problem? Our problem is we're at this big, big top that just last night, right, the bears came in and whacked it right back down again. So we really can't, we really can't just guarantee they're going to push this thing through. You would think with all this strength right now, it'd be pretty darn easy for these buyers to push this thing right up on through here. But again, you know, we're, we're right back up to that major high from yesterday. So you want to keep, you, you really want to keep four different breakout patterns on your radar uh, here for tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's cover those four breakout patterns right now. And, and remember, this will also apply here now to the, uh, to, the, to the NASDAQ and the QQQs as well. The first breakout pattern is very, very simple. We want to see this thing go back up to retest that high, pull back to the moving average, and get a jump off that moving average, right? Anytime we see, anytime we see what I call a one, two, three breakout or a one, two, three reversal, we go one, pull back, and jump. Anytime we get those three-legged moves like that, it's easy. Just mark a trend line off that high, bring it down off that low, and buy that first test, okay? This is a very simple example of a of basically a one, two, three reversal, right? Same, same idea. We go down, one, two, back up. We find that new channel. It's the same basic idea as that, right? So same stuff we talked about a little bit earlier. I want to see this breakout pattern going higher, 
right? That's pretty much exactly what you want it to look like as it goes higher. So I want to see us retest that high. I want to see us pull back to the moving average. I'm not going to buy this breakout going higher. Why? Because again, we're at major areas of resistance with an overall bear bias. That's the reason why you can't really buy very aggressively here at these highs right now. But if we can take out that high, if we can pull back to the moving average, if we can get that strong jump off the EMA, the 21 moving average, I might add, I can now go out and draw that trend line off that high. I can find that channel off of that low. And remember, anytime we have a strong move like that in one direction, the odds are very good they're going to pull back and retest that high. And again, to use an entry on this, the entries I'll use are traps below prior swings, seller failures below the moving average, pullback combinations, the same stuff you'll learn in that free trading course that I mentioned before. So one, two, three breakout, right? One, two, blast, find that new channel, and don't miss that first test. The second one here is one of my favorites. It's a pop and grind breakout. We pop up, take out that high. Now we don't pull back to the moving average and blast. Now we begin to grind and grind and grind. These are an easy, easy giveaway. In fact, they're one of my favorite chart patterns these days. Uh, what, what we do is we draw a trend line off these highs, right? Find, a, find that channel off that low, right? Makes sense? It kind of looks kind of funny the way you draw it, but that's the best way to find the entry. And then you drill down and find some prior swings. Once you find those prior swings, now you know where the best money is to make, right? Get below a prior swing, that's where traps live. Get below a, the moving average, that's where failures are going to be, right? Let the bears come in and try to get short. Once they get short, you know exactly where their stops are. Again, take some profit off at the high, right? Take some profit off the high. And then where do you think the market wants to go at that point? Where's a good final target for a, for a breakout like that? Remember, it's that first leg and that third leg, right? First leg and third leg. Markets love to make these three-legged moves. They'll go one leg, two leg, and three leg. The first leg and the third leg are almost always symmetrical. It's the middle leg that can be confusing. Okay, that's where most people go wrong when it comes to using symmetry. Okay, the key is the number three. So as we look at this, right, this becomes your first leg. That's your middle second leg. Don't worry about that one. Once you get that pullback, though, that begins the third leg, and that's going to give you an idea of where this market or kind of how far this market, right, wants to go at that point. If the buyers, and we talked about this last night, both the buyers, and, both the buyers on the S&P and the NASDAQ have ranges overhead that are really the big, big magnet right now. 38.85, 38.90 here, right, on the on the E-mini. Over on the NASDAQ, that range above us is around just shy of 12,000, right? 11.940, 11.920. That would be a very, very realistic breakout target if the bulls get their act together and break out higher on the S&P or the NASDAQ. So we've talked about the one, two, three breakout. We've talked about the pop and grind breakout. Another one of my favorite breakouts is a two try breakout. Okay, these ones are a little more aggressive. So you want to make sure you've got a nice strong pop to this one, but nice strong pop, shallow pull back to the moving average. That's the key. Strong move, shallow pullback. The shallow pullback will barely touch the moving average, which is great because it doesn't let, it doesn't let anybody in, right? It, it, it creates FOMO in the market. It, everybody wants to get in now. Once you get that strong move, that shallow pullback, that higher high in price, traps, baby. This is one of my, I told you, traps are a big part of the game plan for tomorrow. I love traps because traps, by definition, allow you to buy low and use the opposite side of the market, use their stops as fuel, right? So as the bears are trying to sell into this thing going higher, long-term bear bias, with all of that strength, we expect another leg going higher here. And then, as we always mention, if we were to see a very big move higher overnight, Anytime we see a very, very large move, and again, we live in a crazy world right now, anything is possible overnight. If we see a big move higher for that breakout going higher here, the first thing you want to think of is, is don't chase it going higher. The second thing is, is you want to start looking for a larger channel. Okay, so if we see something that happens overnight, the market rips higher, don't chase it. Wait for a deep pullback that allows us to buy at a relatively low price. So if we do get a real strong breakout higher, the trick is very simple. Find a bigger channel, right, off that high, off that low, 
and the moving average will come in. And what you want to do in this situation is, is you want to wait for that deep pullback. Okay, and I was just talking about this today in the trade room during that big deep pullback we saw during the morning session this morning. And my exact words this morning to all of our students were exactly the same stuff we talked about almost every night on these videos. Whenever you see a really, really big move, you want a deep pullback, right? Why? Because nobody wants to buy high. They want to buy low. And the, the common question is, is, okay, how deep? How deep is deep enough? Right when that little voice in your head says, shoot, I got to sell now, right? Right when that little voice in your head says, oh my goodness, maybe they are going to reverse this thing. That's exactly what happened today on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Right when, right when that little voice in my head said, my goodness, maybe, maybe they are going to V-top. Bingo, that's exactly when it turned and went right back higher for us in the trade this morning. So it's very, very important to keep in mind. If it just jumps, if it just rips and runs higher, Right, we don't want to chase it going higher. Wait for that nice deep pullback, find that bigger channel. And again, when I say deep pullback, it'll usually be the bottom of a bigger channel. And more importantly, once that little voice in your head says, "Maybe I should be selling right now," right? Maybe, maybe right, right, right. Once that pullback gets deep enough, you'll 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 hear it, right? You'll start second guessing this thing. And once you start second guessing it, that is usually bingo. That's exactly what you want thinking about. Okay, how can I trap in some of these bears now and then use their stops, right? Remember, very strong move. They're going to want to go back and retest that level. Trap in those bears. Let those bears sell below the moving average right into the low of that channel and hit them right with that failure. Run those stops and then grab that pullback off the moving average, right? Failure into pullback combination. We talk a lot about those in our free course. Failure into pullback combo. Or sometimes it'll snap up because everyone's caught off guard by it. It'll snap up and all you get is a trap entry. We've talked a lot about traps on the video so far tonight, but that is a very good scenario too. Okay, so kind of the fourth breakout pattern there is if it just rips and runs higher, don't chase it. Find a bigger channel. Wait for a very deep pullback. How deep? Right when that voice in your head says, maybe I should be selling this right now. Bingo. That's exactly where you want to be, right? And, and looking for that failure and then back up to retest that high. Okay. Whenever we get a really big move like this, I always have to remind myself, don't let them fool you on that deep pullback. It's probably going to get bought up by the dip buyers in the market. So now we've got a pretty good game plan if it goes higher. we got a pretty good game plan as it goes lower. Very difficult right now to find shorts here tomorrow though who knows we'll see what happens we may come back tomorrow night and a very different game plan for thursday over on the over on the crude oil right now finishing up on the oil or the uso or the micro crude oil we of course heard from opec this morning uh we talked about this last night uh they were they were anticipating a million barrels per day the rumors started flying yesterday afternoon for a 1.5 uh, apparently russia got involved <laughs> i'll tell you president putin he's no fool he got involved and they kicked it up into 2 million barrels per day a production cut i talked about this last night uh this is something the fed should have done a year ago too right opec is smart right now cutting production they see the writing on the wall I wish I wish they would give some tips to the Fed. So the Fed would have would have raised their rates a little bit earlier than they did. But I digress. There are three key insights right now, though, to make some money tomorrow potentially on crude oil. One is the bull bias. I said it. If you look, look at the four-hour chart right now, it's very difficult. Look at that four-hour chart on oil right now. That is a very strong four-hour candle. Very strong pop-up on the four-hour. Very difficult to call this a bear bias right now. I do realize. The overall daily chart is still pretty bearish right now, but the bullish we're seeing right now gives me a bull bias. I'd love to buy pullbacks. I'd love to buy breakouts. L like I mentioned in the introduction, it's very much going to be a bear trap and bull breakout to the day here for tomorrow. The next clue is really interesting, and this will be a treat for you guys who stuck around all the way to the end tonight. It's a very narrow channel. And why, why are narrow channels important? Well, first of all, sorry, narrow range, excuse me. Anytime we see a bull market into a trading range, we're looking for levels of support below the range to buy right below that trading range. Okay, this is a relatively narrow range, which usually means a larger breakout is necessary. Why? Because a larger pullback or a larger breakout is required to give us a good risk reward ratio. 
So anytime we see a relatively narrow trading range like this one, you, you expect to see a relatively big breakout. And again, think about bear traps down here, right? Think about trapping in those bears and using their stops for fuel to go back higher. Also too, because it is a range here, we may see, of course, this market pull back, trap in those bears, run back up, and then remember, as we mentioned in last night's video, these things love to punch, right? They love to go equal below, equal above, and they love to punch and break out higher. We call those slingshot breakouts or slingshot reversals in our trade room. So this trading range, this trading range is very, very valuable. And then we kick this up even one more notch. And that is, you can see right in front of you, this, what I call kind of a hidden bull channel, right? Because it's not the most obvious thing in the world, but if you know how to draw a channel, you draw channels in bull markets off the highs, bring it down to that low and come on. Can we think of a better place right now to want to be a buyer? You got trend line support, channel support, prior range support. It's like I keep mentioning, it's tough to find an easy way to short this market right now. And oil is the definition of difficult to find a short until something changes, right? Until something changes, it's very difficult to want to be a seller right now. If you look at the oil right now too, it's not just, it's not just this area right here, right? It's this prior low there. It's look at that area. At, you know, it seems a bit unrealistic for 84 half tomorrow, but that area right there looks so lonely right it's so that pre that previous big top it looks so lonely it wouldn't be it should not surprise us whatsoever if at some point in the next couple of days we make that big drop and the dip buyers come in and just gobble that thing up i'll tell you the 84 half level well, 85 is a very very attractive area there for the buyers and again makes it very difficult to justify shorts down there now let's put let's 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 let's, let's cut the chase here right buyers have one thing on their mind right now and that's 90 right? Big round number, 85, 90. I hate to say it, right? It's not good for our gas tanks. It's not good for my bank account balance, right? But it looks like 90 bucks a barrel. The ne I'll tell you though, the next thing about that, look at how look at how much wide open space here. This is not good. Look at all the wide open space. We literally could go from 90 to, no, no, keep going. Yeah, 97 is the next major top up there. I know, right? I know. Buyers have to be looking at that right now and thinking there's a big old gap up there to get filled between between 90 and 97, a $7 gap. Now, again, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself right now. But hey, with the OPEP production cut, who knows, who knows what happens next year in Ukraine. This is looking very frothy here right now on the oil. So we know a lot of this game plan already, right? We know a lot of the game plan already. The big difference here on oil, though, is, is we can be a little more aggressive getting long here below this, below this trading range. As we go lower here, these are the keys to, to, to kind of making money on this. One is going to be, again, trapping in those bears, right? Now, this range back here is a, is, is a, is a, big, is a big support zone too, right? So I want to get that pullback. Get those bears to come in, let them get short, right? Just like back here, right? Get it, get it pulling back, bears get short, and then use their stops, bingo, right back up again. And then look for that, look for that failure into pullback combination, okay? So failure over here, right? Bears get short, we use their stops for fuel, we go up, moving average comes over, and then Bam, right? So failure, pullback combo. And then remember, where does the market want to go at that point? It's going to want to go back up to retest the high. And then you better leave a runner on that one. If you can get that entry short, uh, long, leave that runner because it's going to want to take out the pendulum swing back in the opposite direction. Okay, now let's say we get even better. Let's say we get a deeper pullback. If we see a real strong move down, now we're a lot more bearish now. We're still in a good spot to be a buyer, but now this is where, just like on the S&P and the NASDAQ, we have to get that trap low. So one, two, and then back up, right? That's the entry as we go, as we go higher back up like this. Okay, so traps off that low, and then again, whatever entry pattern we can get off the low of that channel, right? So if we do get that strong run down, look for those two tries and that trap low. Why trap low? Because, well, for example, anytime we see a strong move down, what do we expect? A retest. So that's the second scenario, 
right? If we get that if we get that strong run down and we don't get that one two with that trap, is a good chance it's going to retest that low. If it retests that low, now it's what we call mission accomplished for the Bears. And now we trap in the rookies. Now we trap in the weekends, right? We let the Bears come in, let them try twice. The two-try rule is the easiest way to define signs of exhaustion. It also gives me some stops to use. And so once I have those stops locked in, remember, when you're short and you get stopped out, there's no way to run. You, you got to buy your way out, right? So when, when, when bears get stopped out down here, right, not only are you at a support level with a range above you, ranges are magnets, everyone's buying, right? Buyers are buying here, and now the sellers are buying here as well, right? When, when, when those bears get stopped out down here, everybody is a buyer at that point. The buyers who are buying low and the sellers who by default are now buyers buying their way out. It's tough to lose money when you're buying at major support levels below a trading range, because they're magnets, with running stops. Then from there, so we mark off those highs, Mark off that low, find that channel. And again, I'm obviously simplifying this right now. Failure pattern. Again, it could be a, it could be a trap, a failure, a pullback. This is obviously a, a, a slower time frame, a 1500 tick chart here. We'll drill down to our faster time frames and find the entries tomorrow in our trade room, right? So failures and then that first test off the low of that, of that channel. So keep that in mind there as you go back up into that trading range. And also, too, don't forget, this right here, easily 84 half as well, right? So we've got spots here, we got spots here, and we got spots here. Very difficult to want to be a bear down there, too, because of the range there. Okay, now, breakouts. Okay, we covered four breakouts earlier. What were those four breakout patterns earlier? It was the one, two, three breakout, right? The one, two blast, right? Find that channel. Remember, remember I'm, I'm very much simplifying this right now. You'll, you'll learn a whole lot more about this in that free class I mentioned linked up in the top, right? So one, two, three breakout. I'm not buying the first one. Why? Because of the range. Ranges are magnets, right? We don't buy, right? Look, 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 look. We don't buy that breakout, okay? We don't buy that breakout, okay? It, it takes a lot for me to trust any breakout. I never trust a breakout, okay? I never trust breakouts. So they go lower, Breakout fails, back in. They go higher, breakout could fail, back in like we saw back there. Okay, they have to hold that pullback. Don't trust those breakouts. They're not they're not reliable enough. That's called the one, two, three breakout pattern, right? We don't grab the first one, we grab the next one. The next one is dramatically more reliable, all right? It goes from being a 20% winner to an 80% winner. It's well worth the wait, right? The second one was the pop and grind, right? We pop up. We grind, we grind, right? Easy. That's an easy one. Mark the high, mark the low, find those swings, grab that trap, right? Traps below, below, below the swings, failures below the moving average, pullbacks as you go back above the moving average. Remember, don't forget, first leg, third leg, right? That'll give you an idea of where that final exit is. The, the most aggressive one, right? The strong blast, real strong blast, shallow pullback, higher high in price, traps, baby. Right, that's the, that's the that's the third one. Okay, this one has a very distinct personality to it. Right, strong strong pop. Something happens overnight. You can see it right here. Right, strong pop, shallow pullback, higher high in price. Is there any surprise? People are buying that trap right there. No, it's a very good trade. Right, it's a very good, very reliable trade. I might add. So that same setup right there. Bingo, up there. Okay, it's tough to lose money on that trade. And then, of course, the final one is if this thing just rips, right? Something happens. I don't know, Rocket Man in North Korea is firing missiles again. Who knows, right? This, this, it could get ugly it's at any point, right? We get that big, strong move, right? Big, strong move. How strong? Well, again, what, what usually happens is there'll be a gap up here, right? There'll be some gap on the chart, right? It'll gap up and run. Big, big, huge move. What do you do? You don't chase it. You find that big, right? Find that big channel, Bigger channel, you wait for that deeper pullback. How deep? Right when that little voice in your head says, oh my goodness, maybe, they're, maybe they reversed it. No, 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 no. Wait for those bears now to come in. Let the other traders take that mistake, make that mistake, and you're ready to capitalize on their, right, on their mistake there with that failure pullback combo and a retest that high, right? So strong, big, big, big move up. Don't chase it. Wait for the deep pullback, 
right when we start going to those bigger channels, right when it feels like this market might have reversed back down again, bingo, trapping those bears, blow the EMA, and use their stops for an easy target back up to retest the high. Once we get that retest, do we keep going the breakout, or do we go sideways now, pull back, trap in more bears, and buy off that low? We've talked about this quite a few times already, even in last night's video. All right, guys, hopefully that makes sense there for tomorrow. As you can see, there is no shortage of really great trades setting up for tomorrow. Now all we need is to let these markets open up in Asia, see how we do here coming out of the overnight and kick some butt tomorrow morning in our trade room. Speaking of our trade room, tomorrow morning, if you're looking for a great place to come out and learn and trade along, we open up every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put all the membership links, all the free course links. I'll put all that stuff, all the goodies in the description of the YouTube video, I would definitely recommend grab the free course first, learn the strategy, get the wind at your back, get some momentum going on your own, and I'll be here ready for you when you're ready to make the jump and take your trading up at a, at a couple more levels in our morning trade room. If you have any questions, any questions, don't be afraid to call the office. I'm always here to help out. Live chat is a very, very easy way to get answers to popular questions, and you can always, of course, drop questions in the comment section below. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Hope Hope you learned a bunch tonight on the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you use this knowledge to make a killing tomorrow. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to know your feedback in the comment section. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And you better be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.